Welcome to Blogging with Blogger, our first online tech tip. The first thing we need to talk about is what is a blog? Simply put, the term blog is short for web log and typically acts as an online journal of some sort. So it's a website you create on which you can post your writing, images, video, and express yourself. A blog can be about any topic you wish, or it could be you writing about anything that interests you at the time. Blogs are a great way of being creative. Unlike typical social media, a blog and your post there are persistent. They'll be there until you decide to take your blog down or remove a specific post. Let's take a look at one of the web's longest-running blogs, kotki.org. Started in 1998 by Jason Kotke, this site is still a blog in the purest sense of the word. While it's a bit more sophisticated these days, at its core, it is still simply a page of chronological posts about anything Jason felt like writing about on that day. As you scroll down the home page, you'll see each story with the byline posted by Jason Kotke and a date, starting with the most recent post. While blogs might have all kinds of page layouts, be run by different blogging systems, and some might be about specific topics, this chronological set of postings is the core feature of a blog. As you scroll down the page, you'll see another one. This one also by Jason Kotke on the 7th, and so on. But how do you create a blog? Probably the two most popular blog platforms, systems for creating and maintaining your blog, are WordPress and Blogger. Today, we're going to look at Blogger. Now, the first thing you need to know about Blogger.com is that it's actually owned by Google. So in order to use Blogger, you're going to need a Google account. So what you're going to want to do is simply go to google.com. If you don't already have a Google account, the page will look something like this, although the Google logo will likely be different on the day that you go there. And up here, if you look at my pointer, you'll see Gmail, images, and a link that says sign in. Well, obviously, if you don't have an account, you can't sign in, but if you click sign in, it's going to take you to a sign-in page with a link right here that says Create Account. Click Create Account, choose For Myself, and then you're going to go through this whole process of creating your own Google account. You'll enter your first name, your last name, and your username. So, for instance, my name is Bob. Uh, perhaps I will enter my username as Bob. 1927 or something like that. If the username isn't available, Google will tell you it's not available and make you pick another one. And then down here, you're going to enter your password and then you're going to enter the, your password again here under the confirm field. And you'll go through this whole process of creating your Google account. Once you have done that, you will be able to log into Blogger with it. Now you'll just go back to blogger.com and this is what the home page will look like. You'll see this link here that says create your blog. There's another link up here that says sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Now that I'm signed in, the page looks a little different and this is the administrative side of your blog. And of course you haven't actually created a blog yet so we're gonna have to do that first. So after you click that create your blog link, you're going to enter your profile name. So whatever name you want to display on your blog, I'm going to just type Bob since that's my name and I'm going to click continue to blogger. Now there's some information here about European law and uh, privacy issues and whatnot. They're just letting you know uh, what the laws are in Europe. You can continue to create new blog. The first thing you're going to want to do is give your blog a title. So one of my hobbies is skateboarding. So I'm going to give it the title, Bob's Skateboarding Page. 
The next field is your address. Now, by default, all of the addresses are going to end with blogspot.com. But in this case, you want something to go before blogspot.com. So I'm going to just type Bob's skateboarding. And you'll see here it fills in Bob's skateboarding.blogspot.com. I'll hit the tab key. And it tells you here that the blog address is available. If you pick something that someone else has already taken, it will not allow you to have that. So you'll have to pick a new address. For instance, maybe I would have had Bob's great skateboarding page dot blogspot dot com or something like that. Then finally, you can pick different themes for your blog. This is just how the blog is going to display on the internet for your readers. Now, I like to pick something fairly simple when I'm starting the blog because you can change the theme at any time. One of the great things about these systems is that your content is actually independent of its presentation. So you can write your post, and anytime you decide you just want your blog to look different, well, all you've got to do is go into the themes and pick a different theme. In this case, I'm going to pick the theme called Simple and click Create Blog. Now, you're going to have a window pop up that says Google Domains. Find a domain name for your blog and connect it instantly. That is where you would pick an actual domain name that you purchase for your blog. The reason you might want to do that is, for instance, you don't want a really long domain name that ends with .blogspot.com. Maybe you just want it to say bobskateboarding.com. This is where you would do that. In this case, though, this is just a hobby blog. I'm not serious about it yet. I'm going to click no thanks. And again, we see the post about European privacy laws. But we are now in the administrative side of my new blog. Now, this is what you're going to see when you log in as the admin, as the writer. This is not what your readers are going to see. They will never see this. There are no posts yet because I haven't put anything up. But let's take a look at this dashboard. First, over here, you see Bob's Skateboarding. That's the beginning of the title of my blog, Bob's Skateboarding Page. If I had multiple blogs registered under this same user account, if I click this arrow, they would all show up. But you'll see even here, I've got a choice for a new blog. So I could actually run more than one blog under the same username. Posts. Post, I'll click that, and of course, there are no posts. As it says, there are no posts. Create a new post. This is what we would do in order to create a new post, and we'll do that momentarily. If you had statistics already, then you would click stats to see them. You would be able to see how many page views there were today on your blog, how many people looked at it last month, and whatnot. If people comment on your blog, you would see comments here in the comments section. Earnings has to do with putting advertising on your blog, and that's a completely different topic. Pages is a little different, and we'll go into that slightly in a little while. Layout has to do with the way your page displays on the internet. Your page is created with these different blocks, and again, that's a little bit complicated for this tip, but we'll take a quick look at it after we've done a couple of posts. As I said, you can change your theme at any point. So if I click theme, you will see the theme that I currently have. There's a link to customize it. There's also a version of it for mobile devices, which is really nice. It's a built-in mobile device friendly theme. But if I wanted to change it to something else, when I click theme, it will display down here all of the themes that are available to me. And again, simply by clicking on one of these, I could see what it would look like. Settings has to do with some of the details of your page. Again, you can change 
the title of the page. You can give it a description. You can look at privacy information. You can edit the address of your blog here. So for instance, if I decided I didn't want it to say Bob Skateboarding, .blogspot.com, I could change it to something else, just assuming that that is available. And again, Blogger will check on that. And finally, you can add additional authors to your blog if you wanted to team up with a friend or something like that. And there's some more things down here under settings that you may want to explore later. But let's start by going to Posts and Create a New Post. So click Create a New Post. And you will see that this is very much like every word processing environment you've probably ever used. There's an area right here where you're going to actually type out your post. There's a place here to title your post. So in this case, I'm going to type Bob's first skateboarding post. And you see all of the standard word processing tools that you'll find in most word processing systems. The bold, the italic, the underline, the ability to change the color of your text. You can use this to insert a link in your story. There's a way to insert images in your story. There's a way to insert video, emojis, and all kinds of other things. Now let's get a little text in this text area. I've prepared couple of paragraphs or a few lines of text just to paste into this to make things a little bit faster. You, of course, will be clicking here and you'll see your cursor appear right here. And you can type and compose your first post in this area. In this case, I'm going to paste mine in. And there's a little bit of text, so we'll be able to see how this works. And hello, my name is Bob. I've been skateboarding for 44 years, etc., etc. Now, I could just hit publish and that's going to show up. However, I promised them a picture of me skateboarding at a contest in Germany last summer. So how do I put in an image? Well, if I minimize my browser window by clicking the little yellow button, you will see that on my computer desktop, I have put an image of myself skating. So really all I need to do is import that into my blogger story back on my blogger page then I'm going to position the cursor where I want this image to appear. So in this case I'm going to hit return a couple of times because I want my image to show up under these two sections of text. And then up here in the toolbar I'm going to choose the insert image tool. I click that. It's going to give you a lot of choices here. If you had some images already on this blog, you could click this. There's a lot of different options. In this case, though, very simply, I want to upload from my computer into this blog system. So I already have upload selected. I click Choose Files. I go to my computer desktop, and I click Bob Skating. You can see it imported. There's the image. Now, to put it in the story, I need to single click on it you get the blue border around the image, and I click Add Selected. And there it is. Now that's kind of small. Do I have any options? Well, I can single click on the image, and you'll see a line appear under that says small, medium, large, extra large, or original size. It also gives you options for left, center, or right, as far as where the image is going to show up, and some other stuff. You can add a caption, you can look at the properties of the image and so forth. Let's see what it looks like if I choose large. That's pretty good, but still not as big as I'd like it. Let's choose extra large. That's a little better. So now I'll just click outside of the image, and there it is. So I now have a pretty reasonable first post. How do I publish this? Well, up here on the right upper side of your window, you're, you've got a few tools. One says Publish, one says Save, one says Preview. What I'm going to do right now is click Save. 
So I've saved it, and so it's saved in this system as a draft. I could go back to it and work on it in a little while if I wanted to. If I want to preview this and see how it's actually going to look on the blog, I click Preview. And this is what generally a reader is going to see. They're not going to see these little tool icons here, but you can see Bob's skateboarding page. This is, this is ex pretty much exactly what they're going to see. There are no comments yet. It says posted by Bob at 1.32 p.m. There's a link here that would show up if you were logged into Blogger looking at this for editing and whatnot. But that's not bad. Now, you can see up here in the tabs, it opened this preview in a separate tab. So if I like the way this looks, I'm just going to close this tab. And I'm going to go right back over here and click Publish. Now the story is published. When I click on Posts, you can see Bob's first skateboarding post here. Now, to see what it actually looks like on the blog again, this is exactly what readers are going to see. Click under your blog title, View Blog. It opens up a new window, and there's my page and my first post. Now let's pretend I had misspelled something in here, and I need to edit this. That happens pretty often, at least with me. I publish something, I think everything's good, then I look at it as the public looks at it, and I've made a spelling error. So I'm going to click that to close. I, I go back to posts, and I see my first story here, and you're going to see a few items pop up underneath that title if you put the cursor on it. One of them is edit, one is view, and one is delete. Obviously, you could click delete and get rid of this post entirely. You could view it like we just did, or you could edit. So I'm going to click edit. And that takes us right back into the editing system that we were in before. I could fix any spelling errors, any typos. I could add more text. I could put more images in or whatever I want to. Let's pretend that I just fixed a word, and then I'm going to click Update. It is updated. You see it here again. You can go back and view your blog. And that is just how simple it is to create a blog on Blogger. There are some other features that you may want to delve into eventually. Could take a look at your page here for instance and you might not like the color of this text um, or the color of links that show up well over in the editing side of things if you click on theme and then click customize your theme it's going to take you into a whole system where you can change the color of things so for instance if I want to look at some of the advanced options for changing colors around and whatnot, if I click Advanced here, and let's, let's say I want to change the font of the title of the blog. I click on Blog Title. When I click on Blog Title down here, you're going to see a red glowing rectangle around the part that I'm looking at. What if it's this part that I want to change, the title of a post? Well, I could go to Post Title, and you see that is highlighted. So that tells you what you're working with. And it's on Arial right now as far as the font goes. Maybe I want to change that to Courier. I can click on Courier, and you can see it changed down here. It's a lot of fun to play with all of this, but absolutely not necessary. I suggest that you just get started writing your blog, getting some good content up, and then you can go in and try to play with the settings, uh, try to play with some of the more advanced features that allow you to really customize the way your blog looks. In this case, I'm going to clear advanced changes to the post title. It goes back to the way it was. I'm just going to go back to Blogger up here in the corner. You can apply changes to the blog by clicking this, but I'm just going to go back to Blogger. Changes you made may not be saved. That's fine. I just click Leave, and I'm back 
in the admin side of Blogger. Now, that is a very quick look at how to set up a blog on Blogger and publish a first post. There's a lot of functionality hidden in Blogger that you will want to discover on your own. One thing I do want to point out to you, though, as a new user, that could be very confusing. When you are in the editing side of Blogger, you're going to see right over here a link that is selected that says Compose and another one that says HTML. If you accidentally click the one that says HTML, this is what you're going to see. Instead of your nice clean post, the window is going to have your post interspersed with a lot of computer gobbledygook. Well, the gobbledygook is HTML, hypertext markup language, and this is the code behind your post that actually makes everything display the way you've asked it to display. If you accidentally hit this, don't worry. All you've got to do is click the Compose tab and you're right back where you were. Another thing, if you make a mistake in here, say you edit something and you don't like the way it looks in the edit. Well, instead of having to retype everything, there is right up here an undo button. That will undo the last thing that you did. Likewise, just to the right of the undo, there is a redo button. So maybe you thought you didn't like something and you undid it, and then you decided you do like it, so you can redo it. Those are very useful tools in the editing side of Blogger. Now, if you want someone to be able to see your blog, here is what you need to do. You just go back to the administrative side of your blog. Make sure you're on the right blog in case you have more than one set up and click view blog. That takes you to your home page. There's a couple of ways you can direct people to this. One, you could just have them go to the home page by highlighting and copying this entire link and sending that link to your friend posting it on your Facebook page or whatever. If you want to send them, however, to a specific post that you've made rather than your home page, well, when you're on your home page, the title of each post is actually a clickable link. You can see when I put the pointer over it, it changes color. That means it's a link. I'm going to click that. And now, although it looks the same, you can see up in the address bar, bobskateboarding.blogspot.com, but there's a lot of other stuff, including Bob's first skateboarding post.html. That indicates that you're actually on a page just for this post. So if you wanted to send somebody just to this post that you just made that you're so proud of, you could copy this and send that or post it on Facebook or whatever you want to do. To get back to your home page, just click the title of your blog and you're back on your home page. Now, say you go to your home page and you want to look at your statistics or something like that. You just want to get back to the administrative side of your blog. The easiest way to do it is just go to your blog's domain name, bobskateboarding.blogspot.com or whatever it happens to be. If you're logged on, all you've got to do is click up here in the corner where it says design. You could click new post as well and that's going to take you back into the editing side but if you just want to see your dashboard click design and it's a bit of a misnomer it really should say dashboard because it takes you back to your complete blog dashboard. Thanks for watching our first tech tip on blogging with blogger. If you're interested in pursuing this a little bit further, the library offers some great resources through lynda.com, all about blogging with different systems and some different classes that you can do online that address things like marketing, using your blog, and stuff like that. To get to lynda.com, you will start out by going to planolibrary.org, which will take you to our website, and then you will click the Learn tab. That will take you to our page called Research and Learn. 
This gives you access to all the different database products that we make available to our patrons. If you click the H through N tab and scroll down, you will see the link to lynda.com. And all you've got to do is click the link and it will take you to the login page. You can log in with your library card number and your library PIN number, just like you would any of our other resources, and that will get you into the system. You'll see a search field. In this case, I've typed in the word blogging and hit return, and it's given me a bunch of classes and videos about blogging. But lynda.com has resources for all kinds of things, like 3D animation, video and audio, and all kinds of software products. So definitely check it out if you're interested in doing some self-directed, self-paced learning. Thanks again for watching and happy blogging.